All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ope. I, I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of this po podcast. Everybody has a story to share. My name is Nati Kule. I am uh, streaming all the way from the kingdom of Eswatini, which is in the southern part of uh, Africa. And of course, we are one of the jewels of Africa in terms of uh, being one of the most scenic and one of the most culturally vibrant countries in the whole wide world. And um, what do I do? I am a marketing consultant. I've been in marketing. Uh, I have my own company. I've been in marketing for over 10 years. Hello, and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewafo. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. Before that, I was a journalist, um, uh, a mainstream journalist, but in total, I have 20 years worth of journalism experience and I mix marketing and journalism. And I am also a business uh, mentor, meaning that I help people do business plans. I help startup grow from, from scratch and go all the way to becoming uh, sustainable businesses. And by being a marketing consultant, basically it means I'm also able to help them operationalize their business plans. And marketing is a very critical component of the business plan. If you don't get the marketing components right, your business plan is as good as worthless. Um, who are you going to sell to? How are they going to know uh, about your product and your service that you're offering? So I'm very passionate about marketing and uh, that's what I do locally. And um uh, and through just all the trainings I've been doing over the past five, six years uh, uh, locally, I was able to be recognized by the Entrepreneurship World Cup uh, in 2020, where I, I went through a test and I was selected to represent my country as a mentor. So I was mentoring people from around the world, um, listening to their business plans, helping them uh, really structure their marketing plans and uh, it was very interesting obey because you you you'd find yourself in a situation like this and you're talking to someone in argentina and they're telling you of their product and they're asking you of your views of how can they market their product better and one thing that i learned there is that you know what i may be in the kingdom of eswatini way down in southern africa and they may be in argentina but uh, the principles of marketing remain. It's still the same product, price, promotion, and place. And um, nothing changes. Uh, and and, and they, they would actually write back to me on email, on LinkedIn, and say, you know what? After our session, we were able to change this and that in our business plan. And uh, actually, the guys from Argentina made it into the top 20 of uh, the Entrepreneurship World Cup. And that just goes to show that and no matter where you are, you can still provide value to the next person. And we are in a global, uh, we are in a global uh, a, a sort of uh, a network, and 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 we can share those expertise. I'm here now on a podcast uh, with you, and you are in Italy, and that just shows how amazing uh, technology has just brought us all together. And that's why I'm excited to be a part of this podcast. And by the way, I talk a lot because I'm a motivational speaker as well. That's very interesting. That, that even is an advantage for us now, meaning we are going to be able to learn a lot from you. We are here mm -hmm. uh, so that we can learn from you. That is the reason for bringing you here. So if you talk a lot, that is even an added advantage for us. <laughs> 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 All right. So yeah. tell me, let, let us try to know you a little bit more better. Uh, you growing up now uh, in this beautiful kingdom in Southern Africa. So tell me more about you at the adolescent years. Very interesting childhood I had. Um, you know, there's a famous saying that what you feed grows and what you focus on is what uh, basically ends up being uh, the most uh, significant thing in your life. For example, if you spend most of your time playing soccer, you may become the next Cristiano Ronaldo or something like that. So um, it was the same with me uh, from a very early age. Um, I was not the child who would go out and play with other children. I was the child who would uh, leave school and go straight to the local library. And I'd spend hours there until five o'clock uh, when my parents uh, knock off work and then I'd, I'd proceed home. So basically what that means, uh, dear viewers, is that 
every week I'd read a minimum of three books. But obviously, from the age of seven, those books were probably 10 pages uh, 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 long. And as the years went by, those, those books would grow and grow and grow. And um, so by the time I was 15, you can imagine how many books I had read uh, weekly. And uh, that created a huge foundation for the person I would later be in life because I then became very passionate about writing, very passionate about sharing my story and being expressive and, and being uh, creative, which, which I think also gives birth to the marketer in me because marketers are creative people. They tell a story through, through marketing campaigns and, and very graphic and, and, and innovative marketing campaigns. But if you don't have that sort of foundation of, I'm talking about 10 years of reading three books per day, uh, that's a very solid uh, foundation. And uh, so I won prizes at school, high school for English because, wow, I used to love writing, I used to love reading. And um, I finished uh, school and boom, I find myself in a TV production house because I couldn't get to university. Don't ask how, but it just happened. I applied and I was not taken because of, uh, they said they had taken too many people because they can take so many people per year. So I was stuck the whole year not doing anything. So I, I ended up applying at the local TV station and they took me in and I became one of the hottest producers at the time, at the age of 19. Uh, I say hottest because even the newspaper ended up uh, interviewing me and saying, you know what, there's a hot TV producer changing the landscape of Eswatini. Um, I had a whole feature in the newspaper. And, um, and then thereafter, I, I still had a passion for writing. And I, I, I eventually uh, landed in the newspaper and I became an entertainment editor. I was doing what I loved. I had blonde hair. I was, I was just that guy, that eccentric entertainment guy. And um, I was telling stories about entertainment in the country, and it, which was lovely for me because I was an expressive writer. And then uh, I moved on to the news department where I became a news editor. Mind you, Obey, still not with the qualification. And this is where you and but, me... But of course, uh, you have, you have the, the expertise. You know how to do it, even though uh, not officially written, but you, you could do it. And that is what matters. I, yeah, yeah, please go. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. And, and, also, I, and also, I had leadership. I, I had a lot of leadership uh, experience in the sense that, you know, when you grow up in a... I don't know if you guys have got townships where, where it's a blend of urban and rural... So you, you find yourself being street smart and you can be able to understand and you're emotionally intelligent. You can lead a group, you can read the room. And, you know, I, I was able to, to become a good leader. Uh, I, I started with a team of five reporters that were under me. But when I was under news, I had 20 reporters reporting to me. But I successfully led the newsroom for five years because of that sort of experience. And obviously, constantly reading constantly upgrading myself because I then took the principle that I had from high school. When, when I got into journalism, I read a lot. I took all the books that they were studying at the university. I'd read them daily. What is journalism? What is a story? You know, I, I self-taught myself. By the time I was appointed an editor, I, I was already ahead of their curriculum anyway. I'm not saying I'm a genius, but I just worked hard. And uh, so what then happened was um, one day I got a trip to the United Nations in New York, um, a great offer to go to New York and learn about uh, the UN system, the United Nations system. And uh, we were with 12 journalists from around the world. There was one from Ghana. There was one from uh, the Bahamas. There was one from the UAE. You yeah, have very interesting blend, one from Cameroon, one from um, Croatia. And uh, while we were there for two months, we discovered that journalists are not journalists. They can be more. They can play a bigger role in their countries because everyone we met had a journalism background, but they were now playing a developmental role in, their, in, their, in the world, not in their country. They had left their countries and they were now part of the UN system and playing a huge role so when I came back home, ah, that thing was burning in me and I wanted to do more. And, and I left my job. I said, oh, you know what? Uh, I feel like I want to go do more. Yes, I'm an editor. It's amazing. It comes with prestige being an editor of, a, of the 
biggest selling newspaper, but hey, I want to do more. So I left and um, that's when I started studying uh, with the same college as you, um, the same university as you uh, obey, um, the London School of Journalism. I went online, took my package and I paid, uh, took the package that I got from my workplace, paid for the course. And uh, within, it was what, supposed to be a two, three year course. I finished it in, in, in one and a half years because it was self-paced. And uh, my certificate was flown from London to 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 Eswatini, and guess what? Okay, it was um, a diploma with distinction. So I, I I got a distinction in journalism, and wow! And I thought, wow, okay, let me continue learning. I went on to learn um, uh, marketing at the Gordon uh, uh, School of Business Science, Institute of Business Science, which is the number one business school in in in, in Africa. I didn't get a distinction, but I passed. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, that, that sort of set the tone then uh, for, for, for becoming the person that I am. After that, I, I went into a lot of projects where I started telling developmental stories of the kingdom of Eswatini. I wrote a lot of books, um, company books. I'd go into companies and, and I'd tell them, you know what, I'd, I'd like to tell your story. Uh, and we'd, we'd talk about a package. Okay, we'll pay you so much to tell the story. And I'd write 200 page books, and these were marketing products for the companies. And I basically did this for almost every company in the country, every big company in the country, uh, blending marketing and journalism, which is super exciting. Your, your mobile telephone giants, your, your water services, your electricity giants, your, you know, your railway, you know, I, I just tapped on every, each and every one of those. And yeah, and that 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 that's that's my journey up until today. Where while I was doing that, I I I met up with these guys from Junior Achievement at Swatini. They said they like my craft. They'd like me to share my story with um, the young uh, people who are out of school and uh, motivate them, help them do business plans and stuff like that. And interestingly, when I started that, I started. Um, I just last year, two of 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 the ladies that were, I was mentoring uh, came into the top five of 55 ladies that were being mentored around the country. And they were given seed capital for their business. And, you know, that was a huge moment for me because it's, it, it, it showed that I can uh, impart knowledge and the student can learn up to a point that they can even win a prize, you know. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's just been my passion um, as well. And uh, yeah, I also do motivational speaking. At least once a month, I do a motivational talk. Next week, I'm doing career fair in my country. I'm a moderator there for the business and entrepreneurship. I'm sometimes on TV discussing economical issues and youth empowerment issues, sometimes on radio. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just giving back and it, 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 it all started with just being uh, a nerd uh, who didn't want to go play with other kids who just wanted to be in the library. But what you, you, you water grows and, 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 and it informs your future. And here today I am on a podcast with someone in Italy. Uh, give us a kind of a background information of Eswatini. This is a very important um uh, a mission because you're going to talk about your country now. <laughs> the Kingdom of Eswatini is a is an amazing country. Um, it was voted one of the top five places to visit just before COVID. Top five in the whole world world by Lonely Planet. So you can imagine if Lonely Planet can access all the countries in the world and say, out of all of them, Eswatini has is one that you must see. Um, it, it, it means a lot about the country. We are situated next to South Africa and Mozambique in the southern part of Africa. We are a scenic country. By scenic, I mean you've got lovely uh, mountains, you've got valleys, you've got uh, lots of trees, you've got uh, lots of animals, your giraffes, your lions, your elephants. It's, 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 it's got a lot of nature, wildlife. Uh, we have tourists coming in in buses. Uh, just recently, a report in the newspaper said we were in the top 10 of uh, countries that were visited recently in the whole of Africa. We were number nine uh, because people just are fascinated about 
this culturally rich country. When I talk about culturally rich, it's because we've also got these events that happen uh, periodically in the country that, that, that where we've got dances, we, we've got this culture of music and people are just fascinated about uh, our culture and how we are preserving uh, being hu uh, humble, being um, uh, a very unique nation that is united. Yes, we have our problems like any other country. If you Google Southern these days, the Swatini in those days, you'll find that there are some political issues that are happening. But hey, if you Google any other country, what will you find? Um, there's, there's, there's the good and the bad. But uh, above it all, we are just an amazing country. And it's, it's, it's really lovely to be here, to grow up here. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of intellectual capital, a high literacy rate. A lot of people who leave Eswatini for other countries really get top posts. They're usually CEOs of, of companies outside the country. And that just shows uh, how, how, how intellectually capital we have in the kingdom of Eswatini. That's, that's interesting. It's a country with uh, roughly a, a million people, no, a million and 16. <laughs> yeah, so 100%, people is... 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's good. So we move straight now to the conversation on marketing. Now, can mm -hmm. you give us a kind of a background of marketing for people who do not understand what it means? Because that is where we're going to spend most of the time today. Please step <laughs> <all> with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very interesting question because um, I, I get this a lot where people uh, ask you to come to a session to, to talk about marketing. And I ask myself, um, how can I talk about marketing within 30 minutes. Marketing is a very broad topic, but um, um, just in a nutshell, in my in my in my own explanation, or or not the scholarly one that you can find, or academic one that you can find on. All right, what is marketing? A very broad uh, question. Okay, I can talk about this for the next three years, but we've only got a few minutes here. Promoting and selling products uh, or services, and it includes market research and advertising. That is the theoretical and academic definition of marketing. But for me as a marketer who's on the ground, I can explain marketing like this. Marketing is a vehicle. It is, it is the mode or the conduit that takes your goods or services to the people, that makes your goods and services visible to the people. It is, it is the whole strategy. It is the whole plan. It is the whole mechanism. It is the, the, the soul of, 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 your, of, of your business and, and, and it is the light of your business. Um, there's a comedian who likes to joke when he sees light in people, he says, how have you swallowed a light bulb? Uh, because it, the person then glows. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning that, that comedian is because uh, marketing makes, you, makes your product glow. And, and it makes people want to not walk past your shop. One of the biggest uh, issues though, that comes with um, starting a business is that you can have everything right. You can have the best setup of your business, the best building, everything like perfect. But if you, if, if you are not able to have a marketing strategy or a marketing plan or a proper market research, even before the marketing plan, then your business, my friend, is in trouble because uh, it will not be known. They normally say um, advertising, uh, and running a company without advertising is like winking to a girl in the dark. The girl won't see you. You're just winking and she will not see you. So it's the same thing uh, with marketing. Uh, if, 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 you are, if you are running a, a company and you don't have a marketing plan, you, you're as good as doing nothing with your company. Your company will not achieve any sales. If it does, it will be through luck uh, because uh, you need to set up a good uh, marketing strategy. You need to identify the customers that you want to sell to. You need to, to have a vision of, of, of how to get to your, to your, to your, to your, mark, to your market. That's hence the word market before before marketing, and um, there's many vehicles that that are part of marketing. Uh, these days, we're talking about social media. People have just gone out and said, "You know what? I'm not using radio. I'm not using TV. 
uh, everyone is on their phones now. I'm marketing on 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 uh, on on, for, on 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 my phone or on 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 websites, and that has given birth to something called digital marketing. And digital marketing is like the biggest thing happening right now. If you're in business and you don't have a budget for digital marketing, again, you're winking in the dark. No one will get to see you because people are not uh, looking at billboards nowadays. They are looking at them, but hey, you've got two choices. Either you're driving or you're looking at a billboard. <laughs> but if you're on your phone during lunch, you're definitely going to see my advert. So which one is better? And also uh, advertising on uh, digital you get instant feedback. There's just a lot of benefits that have come from, from uh, digital marketing. And uh, during COVID, I think you guys were also locked down. Uh, we also got to really appreciate the power of being on, having a, a, a huge social media presence because a lot of companies were able to still continue making sales uh, using their phones, able to make home deliveries and so on and so forth because of their digital media presence. But again, they first had to market, tell people, hey, we have got these products. Do you want them? They, so marketing normally has these four uh, main pillars, product, price, place, and then, of course, promotion, which, which we're talking about in terms of screaming and reaching out to the people. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that is marketing. That is marketing. All right. Thank, thank you so much for that. Um, now, you did make mention of uh, something that I, I like uh, a lot, which is uh, the strategy, you know, because it's not just about the doing that, but the doing it the right way, because you need to do it the right way for you to get results. If you are just doing where anybody can actually be doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> looking at the strategy, how do you set up a good marketing strategy? Say maybe you are in business, because most of the people that are uh, listening to this podcast are in small businesses. Maybe they are setting up their own business at home or they are about to set up one. So they need to understand how to set up a good marketing strategy. Help me with that. Very, very simple, Obey. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is you need to do a market research. You cannot sell, uh, you cannot do a marketing strategy without first knowing if people want your product and how people want your product where people want your product and how much your product must be. So when you do a market research, you take a questionnaire with say 10 questions. Let's say, for example, you wanna sell cakes in uh, Milan, you're in Italy. So you go about in, in that community where you wanna sell, you go around asking people, uh, do, you, do you eat cake, yes or no? Um, if you eat cake, what kind of cake do you like eating? Chocolate, vanilla? This is now informing product when you're asking them what kind, because one of the biggest mistakes that uh, people in business do, they usually rush to just think vanilla cake will, will sell like hotcakes without asking the people. So you find that from your market research, you'll find maybe 90% will say they like chocolate. And then you'll now change your whole marketing strategy. Hey, here's the new latest uh, chocolate uh, shop. And, and that will inform uh, your sales and drive your sales. And then you, you ask another question, if you were to buy um, my product, how much would you buy my product for? That will inform pricing as well. And obviously you will still go and look at competitor prices, but you also want to find out from the people that you want to sell to. And then most importantly, uh, okay, in a marketing uh, research, you need to also ask the people, how do they access information? Do they access it from notice boards? Do they access it from billboards mostly? Do they access it from their phones, WhatsApp messages? Do they access it from uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? So that you know where to put your budget to in the markets that you want to sell to. So basically market research creates the foundation for your, for your whole uh, marketing strategy. Once you've got that one out of the way, now you know what to do. Then you can start writing your, your marketing strategy to say, you know what? This guy say they want um, the access stuff on Facebook. Now you can then say, okay, I'm going to dedicate so much of my budget to sponsored posts so that they see more about my product and service on, on Facebook. Now this is the strategy. And then the strategy also includes time, a work plan uh, in terms of uh, uh, timelines. To say, I want to, to, by this month, have done this. 
uh, done so many adverts within a, a certain period. You know, you 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 then uh, set up what is called uh, smart goals, specific, measurable, uh, achievable, realistic uh, goals uh, that are linked to your to your to your marketing strategy. And also, as you're doing your marketing strategy, obviously, you also do a SWOT analysis. Uh, where you look at strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And all those obviously have been informed by uh, the market research you did previously, where the people were saying, um, yes, we like cake, but we prefer muffins more. And that's a threat because you want to go into a cake business, but they prefer muffins. But again, it is a threat and an opportunity at the same time. So you also write it as an opportunity under, under your marketing strategy. So there's really a lot that goes in, but it all starts with uh, the market research. And, and, and the biggest, biggest mistake most small businesses do, they rush to sell. They say, you know what? Everyone wants a smartphone. Everyone wants a smartphone. I don't need to research. Let me just start selling. They start selling and they discover that it's not that everyone wants a smartphone. Everyone wants an iPhone, not a smartphone. <laughs> And by then they've got a whole lot of Androids and now they have to uh, discard them because people are not buying them. They've not asked the market what they want and they are marketing and they're saying, you know what? I've spent so much money on marketing, telling these people about my Android phones and they're not buying. Why? They're not buying because it didn't do the basics in the beginning. It didn't ask them what they want so that you could be promoting and exactly promoting that 13 Max Pro and, and, and delivering what uh, people want. All right, that's very important now. Uh, because uh, most mm. of the people that we are targeting with, the, um, with our business Target session audience, in Overhead yes. Podcast are people that are started out in business or those mm. who are recent, they are new, they are not yet pro mm. in this. It is very important that mm. we break it down like this for them to understand. Now, say you want to talk mm. to somebody who is starting out in business and you are telling this individual you need to do market research. Now, what would you recommend for this person to do in order to really understand properly what you are talking about in terms of market research? Because without market research, I don't think you are going to be able to succeed in actually marketing. So help me with that part. The key things is, is well, first and foremost is identify. It's identifying your target audience. Uh, it's very important to, to identify your target audience. It's very important to identify um, your, your, your place. Um, e eventually, let me, let me just say eventually, everything goes back to the start, to, to the four Ps, uh, the product, place, and uh, promotion, and uh, product, place, promotion, and price. So as you are doing the questionnaires to the people, using a survey, you need to be answering these questions of how does the target audience want me to promote my business? How does the target audience want me to price my product? How, where does the, the, the target audience want to access my services? And uh, yeah, basically those, those, those three ones. You know, there's also another very um, interesting marketing mix. Uh, it's called uh, SIVA. It's a, a solution, information, uh, value, and access. Um, again, the market research uh, speaks to what do they, what, what is their need? When you're going out and asking the, the target audience, what is your need when it comes to confectionery products? Uh, what is your need? My need is muffins. My need is, 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 is donuts. My need is this and that. Because at the end of the day, your business must be a solution-based business. So your survey will be talking to that. That research will be talking to that. Um, and then uh, I said, uh, then information. Um, how do they want you to spell out uh, what your product is about? Because, you know, it's one thing to talk about, um, to talk about a cake, but you also want to talk about the nitty gritties and, 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 and the core of, of what a cake is. You know, one of the biggest mistakes marketers make is they tell you, I'm selling a chocolate cake. It is um, 10 euro. And then they end there without saying, I am selling um, 
a, a, a double chocolate uh, melt in your mouth uh, melt in your mouth uh, sponge cake uh, perfect for coffee and, and, and hot wet and cold weather you know you really need to, to, to speak more to the people so in the market research like I said the most essential the most most essential uh, part of market research is the survey the second most essential thing is your target audience, uh, understanding who your target audience is and, and being able to, to speak to them. And uh, last but not least, um, uh, it, 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 is, it is being able to um, define what the problem is uh, or, or what their need is so that you can be able to then provide that solution. Then, then once you've done that in the market research, once you've done the data processing and analysis and reporting, after you've done your data collection, your research, you are able to then go home or to your business and you're able to then break it down and say, oh, you know what? I wanted to start a cake business, but they're saying they prefer donuts, they prefer, they would prefer muffins and now you're able to now speak to the the real need of the target audience so that is why i'm saying those are the three most important uh, uh, uh pillars of, of the market research it is uh it is the target audience it is uh, their needs and it is also the the the, the survey the research that you do mm. and, right. and 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 this is this yeah, is this is free this is free of a you you, you just you just grab a notebook, you rush onto the street, you stop, you stop a, a person of a certain age group, you ask them f uh, 10 questions, you go to the next one of a different age group, you ask them 10 questions, you go to the next one, and then, and then you, pray, you come back and you, you unpack all the results, and they will then inform your marketing strategy. This is free. You don't, you don't need to be scratching your head and, and thinking, what questions can I can I be asking? The questions I've given you already, they are the basic questions. How much do you want to buy the product? Where do you want to buy the product from? Do you want home delivery? How much do you want um, the product from? Uh, where do you access uh, marketing uh, information from? And uh, yeah, basically that's, that's, that's the, the long and short of the market research. And obviously, the demographics, uh, they play a part in your market research report to say you've interviewed maybe 30 people and 10 of them are, are in their 20s and 10 of them are in their 30s, 10 are in their 40s. And then out of those in their 20s, maybe only five want your product. Out of those in their uh, 30s, uh, maybe all 10 want. Those in their 40s, only one wants. And then again, that helps you understand the market so that you know that, you know what, I need to be selling to the 30-year-olds. And, and, and if you're going out with your, with your cake stall, you see a, 30, a person in their 30s, you rush to them, hey, I'm selling this cake. Chances of success uh, are higher than you trying to sell to a person who's just not interested in sweet products. Because once you get to your 40s, your sweet tooth may not be there anymore. Mm, yeah, yeah, that is something to really remember. All right, now <laughs> let's look at your own personal story in your business, in your work. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? Uh, I mean, how simple was it for you, or if hard, how hard was it for you to find your audience? Because you have a, a specific audience that you are serving in your business. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So tell me about it. We want to understand from your personal experience. Uh. It was, it was, you know, entrepreneurs provide solutions, okay? So it was easy to find my target audience because I went around different companies, did my own market research, went around different companies, went into their, um, into their uh, what you call, reception areas. And I looked, I found there was nothing talking about them. No brochures, no pamphlets. If there was a pamphlet, it was outdated. And uh, I said to myself, you know what? There's a need here. If I was to propose to these big companies to write a detailed book or a detailed publication that talks about their history, that talks about their DNA, that talks about their values, principles, 
where they started from, pictures of their early years, their growth, just to just to be able to buy in the customer into their journey. I sold this and every company loved it. And they were like, wow, this will make it even easier for us when we hire new employees and we, we give them this book. They'll, they'll understand our history. It, it, it's not only for an external uh, product, it is also an internal product. So it was a bit easy. And it was also low cost in terms of uh, the fact that um, you're finding yourself not having a lot of uh, high capital uh, needed because as long as you've got a laptop, you could start immediately on the project. Unlike uh, when you're going into other projects, like, like, let's say you're selling cell phones, you'll need, uh, say, 100, um, maybe 10,000 euro to go and stock up on cell phones. Secondly, you'll need, uh, uh, um, you'll need a shop where you'll be selling from. Thirdly, you'll need a cash register uh, so that you can produce a receipt. Those are high, high uh, uh, startup costs for that kind of business. But if you're talking about a business where you're providing service, because here, yeah, okay, you must also look at the issue of service versus uh, product. I am in the service industry. Service industry, low startup costs. Product industry, huge startup costs. You need a loan sometimes to start up a product industry. You want to sell laptops, where are you going to get the money to stock up laptops? You need to have saved up uh, th that money or you need to get a loan to be able to then go stock up. But with the service industry, if you're a marketing professional and you're coming here with solutions, the solutions are here. The solutions are in, uh, they're in a book. The solutions are, 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 are in a book. The solutions are in a strategy. And all those things, uh, they don't require money. So you're able to really set up uh, that, that company with little or no uh, input in terms of capital. The only capital that you do, uh, however, put in is uh, a lot of time. It's a lonely, lonely process. I was reading, I was reading this morning um, uh, 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 an article on one of the business newspapers in South Africa. It was saying uh, the high unemployment rate in South Africa, which is our neighbor, can only be solved by solopreneurship, solopreneurship. Solopreneurship being uh, you starting up your own business on your own, providing a, a service or product to, to your customers and not really going on a lot of high um, uh, startup costs. And, 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 and uh, they are driving people to now start thinking about that. Start thinking of self-employment. So, so, sorry, sorry before you continue that. there, because that is very vital. <laughs> what you, what you heard, read in South Africa. <laughs> Because I think it's not a yeah. problem, it's not a solution only to the South African people. It's a problem to the whole of Africa, yeah. particularly the time that we live in today. Because I find it very interesting. That's why I just say, let me just add this to it before I, I forget. <laughs> it. Because this is actually the yeah. solution. Because the economy has changed. It is it's a global <laughs> phenomenon. But for us in Africa, because we have a demography that is uh, characterized with the young people, solopreneur mm. is a solution to African problem. In that we should start looking at how can we provide solution to our problem. Let let begin to look at the problem as your problem, my problem. What can I do to solve this problem? What can I give to the people to help them so that they can in next year they can give me money? You see, this is a this is diff, this is different from the argument that we have had up until now, where we usually say the government should provide the job. Now in Nigeria we we say this a lot. No, the government should do this. The government should do that. Now, when we do that, we are selling our power away because we are appearing as if exactly, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't have power, we can't do anything. If the government is not there, we are going to die. But it is not the case. With people, mm. the people, mm. particularly the young people connected to the international mm. grid, have the possibility. Mm. I'm doing a lot of interview mm. with a lot of Nigerians now in Abuja, in mm. Lagos, in other part of the country who are doing something mm. incredibly beautiful. You know, they are setting up their mm. own businesses. And this is the solution. Mm. Please carry on. Mm. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I like what you said about uh, not wanting to look at government to provide the solution. Yes, what, what government provides is an enabling environment. And by an, an enabling environment, I'm talking about low registration costs for business. I'm talking about 
um, uh, policies that help people to be paid on time if they're in business. Because some of the things that happen, you go into business and you're paid after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days and your business doesn't. And at home, they're saying, what are you busy with up and down on the streets and you're not bringing home any money, you know? Uh, I saw one post in Botswana during COVID and uh, they said they announced that um, a small business people must be paid within 24 hours because they need that money uh, more than ever. And, and those are the sort of policies that you're looking at government for. We are not looking at government to be the, 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 the service provider or, or the jobs provider, but you're looking at government being the one creating an enabling environment. Interestingly, uh, the other time I was um, uh, a moderator for a schools competition. Okay, yeah, so I was a moderator for a schools competition and uh, the, the, the most interesting thing that happened there, the young people there had websites, they had a lot of interesting businesses, smart gardens and, and so on and so forth. And these are teenagers, 16 years old of age, you know, and uh, the Minister of Commerce was there. And I said, I said, uh, Minister of Commerce, here are young people. They've got the ideas, but they, they cannot register a business. The cost of registering a business is too high. What are you doing as government to make sure that more young people break into the market, even if they do not have the, the funds? And he stood up uh, during his speech. He said, you know what? The, the, the program director has challenged me here. He says uh, the registration costs are, are an impediment to young people going into business. I promise that by the time my term is over, I will have um, removed the registration fee so that more people can go into business. What does that do, Obey? It just opens up um, uh, 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 the solopreneurship. I've got an idea. I, I register within, within 24 hours. I'm already in the market. I'm already selling. I'm already making a living. And, and, and that is what governments do. Governments do not really offer jobs. They create an enabling environment. That's interesting. All right. Now, going back to um, marketing, having, because you are good to, the, marketing cannot be avoided if you are in business. This is very important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, are there some principles that must be ahead to, to be successful in marketing? Some key principles that need to be, that need to, that need to be obeyed? You, the first principle I'd say is you need to be very open-minded. Um, number two, you need to be abreast with the, with the latest trends uh, in marketing. Uh, number three, you need to keep learning every single day. You must be learning about new trends. Um, like I spoke, spoke, spoke speaking earlier about digital marketing, you need to know where your market is. Are they into still images? Are they into videos? What are they into? Are they still taking brochures? You need to be constantly upgrading yourself and finding out what the market is thinking and, and, and how they're thinking about those things. Uh, number four, you need to be very confident. Yeah, you need to be very, very confident uh, if you're going to be a successful marketer. Successful marketers have a very strong self-belief. They believe in themselves. They believe in their products. They are the first to buy their own product and, and, and they are not shy about their products they make you have what is called FOMO, fear of missing out. It's very important. FOMO is very important as a marketer to create that so that people know that if I do not have this product in my hands, I have nothing. Um, and another principle, you need to move with the trends of influencer marketing. Uh, you talk about Nigeria. There's a lot of um, uh, the movie industry that is booming. Uh, how do you, do you get those people to sell your products? And, and advertise them on their music videos, on their, on their movies, on their TV shows. Um, yeah, you need, you need to be constantly aligned and alive to your environment, your principles. That, that, that's another principle. You need to be aligned to what's happening uh, in your environment. Have your finger on the pulse of your environment uh, to understand where people are moving at a particular point in time. You, you know, sometimes, okay, I read business plans and you find a person saying uh, I will advertise in the newspaper I'll advertise on a billboard and I, I, I ask this person how much is it to advertise in the newspaper they tell you maybe it's um, 1000 euro per advert 
I say, how much do you have to start up your business? I have uh, 500 uh, euro, but you want to advertise in the newspaper. <laughs> so you also need to be realistic as I was talking about smart goals that are being uh, uh, realistic targets. Uh, if you cannot afford to advertise in the newspaper, where can you advertise and still get the same uh, traction and, and, and um, uh, sort of coverage from people? Word of mouth still works um, uh, very well. Uh, which is and that, why and that is important. That, uh, the, the last time I was checking, word of mouth is still free because you can still talk to people <laughs> freely. <laughs> so are there some free ways yeah. that people can, can still market the, their product out there in 2022? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Word of mouth is, is one. Facebook is, is another one. Uh, on your profile, add as many friends as you want, have 5,000 friends, and then start marketing products to them on a daily basis and telling them, uh, I can come deliver to you. Another very free and quite popular word of mouth, but it is word of phone, it is uh, the WhatsApp. WhatsApp statuses uh, during the COVID period people were advertising like crazy on the WhatsApp wheel on the side, uh, saying, you need meat. Uh, I've got this kind of meat at this price. I can come to your house. You need vegetables. I'll bring vegetables to your house. You need uh, clothing. I'll come uh, with your T-shirt. What size are you? Um, you need perfumes. And, 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 and that is word of mouth as well, because you're, you're spraying to all your 400, 300 contacts on your phone and you're making use of those people instead of just uh, taking selfies and uh, showing them your, your slay queen life there, yeah, you could be using that as a marketing platform. All right, that's cool. Now, in the age of digital economy, the one that we have today because now everything now move online, this is not only because of COVID-19. Before COVID-19, I've been reading, people have been saying, in fact, we have been saying it in our, in our platform, that people should learn how to uh, um, get started on digital uh, entrepreneurship. Because, mm. you know, we cannot remain always analog. Evidence is there, no? So since we are still talking of um, market research, where you are no longer going to maybe meet the person that is next door to you, most of maybe mm. your clients these days are going to be outside of your country. And maybe mm. you are not even starting your business, but those are going to be your clients because of what they are going to produce, for example. How do you mm. research this client? How do you research this audience? Uh, just like the way you used to do before, talking to a person one-on-one, one -on -one, asking them questions one-on-one, -on -one, but this time you are not seeing them. They are online. No? How do you still go about and do the same thing? It's possible and it's easier in the digital age. You use something called a survey monkey uh, or online surveys. You just Google uh, online survey tools. You'll find things like survey monkey. They'll, they'll be asking you yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, next, 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 age, next, 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 and you're done. Uh, the only downside with that is I receive a lot of those. And um, I think maybe out of 20, I'll answer one because it's not personal. Yeah, I'm not, there's no, no person sitting in front of me and I'm old school and I want that personal touch of a person talking to me. But uh, that, is, that is one way that is a lot of people are using. So you'd go on your WhatsApp, go to your contacts, spray that survey monkey and say, hi, my name is Obey. I've got a, a, a new company. I want to sell. Um, um, I want to sell suits, and I'd like you to take five minutes of your time. Um, and you could you win yourself a suit once you are, you 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 finished. Uh, I, I think I'm going to have to try that so I can get some some more. <laughs> 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 yeah, people 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 want a value. What's in it for me? Why why should I why should I sacrifice five minutes of my time for you? You know. So, um, yeah, stand a chance to win something. And, uh, yeah, please, please answer the survey very quickly for me. It will take five minutes of your time. Oh, so, um, yeah, 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 please go. So you just pray that. Yeah, you just pray that to all your contacts. And uh, out of uh, 300 contacts, I guarantee you, at least 10% will come back, which is not bad. Uh, you've got 30 and you've got something to work on and you can do a percentage from that.
Now, uh, the question I have for you is, um, is it possible that uh, in the course of your business, of your marketing, there can be some difficulties, some challenges that you have encountered on your own that you have overcome at the point? Well, there's a famous question. There's a famous quote that says, "When you innovate, you 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 you, are, you can at times make mistakes." Um, so yeah, you you make mistakes. Uh, marketing is is crazy. You you writing something there and one word missing word, and yeah, you you find yourself uh, having to now have to do twenty new marketing campaigns to to fix that. For example. If you say the wrong price, if something is 150 euros and you advertise and you say it's 15 euro and people are already calling and like bring, bring, bring. Now you're trying to bring down the post. I've never been through that, but I'm just saying those are examples of business, of, of problems that you encounter and that you must expect to encounter if you are in marketing. There's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of uh, sometimes you design something and you put it out to the public and it's not so clear and you need to remove it. Sometimes you think you've recorded something very well and once it's on TV, you're watching it, you're like, ah, oh, no, we need to pull this one out. There's, 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 there's a lot that you encounter in the creative space. But uh, the most uh, important thing is that if you're in the creative space, you need to have resilience. You need to have a uh, bounce back power and you need to just know that whatever failure you have encountered does not mean you are a failure or does not mean the project is a failure. It's just um, a stepping stone towards, uh, and it's just a lesson uh, that will make you better because without those lessons of failure in the early stages, you'll not be able to take on big marketing campaigns that will be flawless. So um, it's a very interesting question. I was asked this question in, a, in an interview for a marketing campaign last year. They asked me the same thing. They said, uh, tell me um, uh, one of the worst marketing campaigns you've ever run and, and, and how did you manage to survive from them? And uh, yeah, um, it's, 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 you survive through honesty, being quick to, to go back to your client, explain to them what has happened and uh, do not explain excuses. Do not come and say, oh, this has happened and, and just relax. You are able to rush quickly and tell them this has happened, but this is the solution. I've got solution A, B, and C to remedy the situation. And that gives your, your, your clients confidence because they have hired you not for you to tell them their problems, they've hired you for solutions. So uh, there's a famous quote that says, you can either have, um, uh, you can either have excuses or you can have solutions, yeah, but you can't have both. So as, as, as a, in, in marketing, you need to be always coming up with, with solutions. And, and you must know that your client wouldn't need you if, 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 if they had solutions. So they, they already know the problem. They need you to give them a solution. So you must always be researching, as I was saying earlier. You must always be finding bounce back power. And uh, how do you bounce back? You, 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 you need to be invested in your craft. Um, put in the hours. Um, I was watching a video of, of a Manchester City player after extra time, I think, uh, which is 120 minutes, and then the stadium was empty. This, this player from Algeria, Rihad Mahrez, was, was running around the stadium all alone and, and practicing, still practicing after the game. And you can just tell that is why he is a top athlete, and that's why he's still playing for one of the biggest teams well, in the world, one of the top 10 biggest teams in the world, because he puts in the hours. And with marketing, for you to have less mistakes and less challenges and have more solutions, you need to put in the hours, just like that soccer player and find yourself running around even after uh, the game is over. <laughs> I want to believe that when you started, you were not as good as, as this, no? There was a moment of you growing up, you needed to do some things to help you um, improve in your, in your skill, in your, to, to fine-tune your tools of the trade. Was there people that you were looking up to as sort of marketing hero, people who you needed to learn from? Who were these, if there is any? Uh, there's dozens and dozens 
um, and they are all online. Okay? They are all on on Instagram. No, they are not on Facebook. They are on Instagram. Um, there's a difference between Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, uh, just there. And but Instagram, you can you can you can sort of uh, segment your. Say, this is who I want to follow. This is the sort of feeds that I, I want. So you can search on marketing and search on, on, on mark, leading marketers uh, out there. Um, you, you have uh, people like Brian Walsh, you have people like, um, um, let me just think. Um, okay, I, 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 I'm also very, very fond of Stephen Covey, the guy who wrote uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. He is not a marketer. He, he is um, a, a self-help who really helps train your mind to look on the positive side of things. Um, I believe in positive thinking. I, I follow a lot of positive thinkers more than I follow uh, marketers. I follow a lot of um, people who, who, who look at the glass half full, who train you to look at the glass half full and uh, instead of half empty, rather than I follow uh, people who say, this is the latest marketing principle. Now I, 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 I'm not into that. I, I follow people who, who look at opportunity, who, te who, who teach you find opportunity in anything, in any sphere, uh, who, who tell you that, hey, if there's uh, 500 people in a, in a, in a church, what product can you sell them that can make the that can make you money? Sell them a candle or something. I follow people like that. Um, uh, yeah, I'd have to share that with you. Um, but you can, you know what you can do? You can just go on my Instagram and just check out who I'm following. Um, I'm, I'm following uh, success pages. I'm following uh, Gary V, the famous motivational speaker. Um, I'm following. Um, I'm following uh, motivational speakers like Les Brown. Um, I'm following. Uh, yeah, I'm following uh, quite a lot. I'm following over three hundred motivational speakers, so that my oh, mindset right. is always on, on on the right track. Yeah, and also I follow examples of 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 the kind of products or marketing geniuses that I want. In terms of personal branding, for example, there are people that are, are flawless in personal branding. I follow those people. And in America, you, your, your hip hop artist, you follow those guys just to see how they post, how they win followers, how they, how they do their things. Instead of following a marketing trainer, you follow the product because you, you just want to see how they do what they do and when they do it and how they get so many people obsessed with it. So maybe for example, you have offer there, something you want to promote for the people. Use this few seconds to promote yourself. Go ahead. I, I, I'd love to collaborate. Uh, I don't know where you're watching from, how big your company is, or if it's still in ideation stage. I'd love to have a conversation with you, find out how we can collaborate, what services I can provide for you in terms of helping out your company from whatever it is, either it's ideation, startup, already growth stage or already sustainability stage, uh, we can have that again because like I said, it's a global community. We can buy WhatsApp video via Zoom. We can just collaborate and see what services I can provide you guys. Uh, I have a lot of services, business mentoring, marketing services. Positivity uh, uh, training sessions, personal development, personal branding, um, yeah, uh, company branding, uh, just, just, uh, and also I would love to, I don't know, perhaps you're watching this and you're saying Kingdom of Eswatini, one of the top nine most visited countries in Africa. I've got this, can I uh, ship it from Nigeria to Eswatini? Yeah, let's talk and uh, let me find a way um, that I can products and sell it this side we share profits um, obviously you'll get the bulk but yeah <laughs> it's, it's 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 all about collaboration and uh how can i also ship stuff to your country i don't know where you're watching from could be watching from london uh, but you'd also love to sell a few african products and uh, you're interested i can be that link uh, let's let's talk let's let's 
let's be a global community uh, thanks to uh, technology. I'd be excited for those collaborations. All right. Now, for people who want to succeed in marketing, what would be your strategy for the kind of recommendation that they need to uh, apply so they can have success in their business? Uh, for success in your business, you need to invest in marketing. Have a budget for marketing. Uh, do not uh, only look at marketing by the way. Look at it as is as important as the operational uh, part of the, of the business. Uh, look at it as important as the human resource. Uh, so allocate a budget. Um, do consult uh, with uh, experts in the field to, to do an analysis of your business, weak points and, and strengths and where, where you can have opportunity for your products to go out there. And uh, more importantly, as a business owner, you also go on these online courses, there's billions of them online uh, that are talking about marketing, digital marketing, plugin, uh, pay for them. Uh, a friend of mine was saying, um, don't invest in, in, in these apps and, 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 and online training. They too are quick to buy ourselves fried chicken and stuff like that and junk food. Yet we don't want to invest in things that are our businesses. Uh, so yeah, if, if it's worth paying, uh, pay for it. Google has a digital marketing course that is free. It's on the Google Google Digital Garage. Just Google, search Google Digital Garage and you'll find a uh, fundamentals of digital marketing there. It's free. It will change the whole way you look at digital marketing and you'll also get certified uh, as well. And it will take your business, especially for startups. It's, it's a brilliant, brilliant course to go on. A lot of videos to watch. But it will change the way you look at websites, change the way you look at Twitter, Facebook, and, and it will like, let you understand uh, how to do this in this digital era. I'd like to conclude by saying uh, keep, keep, keep up with your dream. Um, whatever dream you have, uh, it is not too small. Uh, whatever startup business you have, um, I, was, I was surprised when I, I, I watched a video on, on, on Facebook founder his the Facebook product was not the first product he did. He made a lot and the others didn't succeed. So just because your, your first few products don't succeed, do not, uh, do not stop uh, trying. Keep trying. Keep uh, adapting, adopting and moving and evolving with the latest trends. And you'll get it right. You'll get it right. And um, that is my advice to anyone who wants to go into marketing. And uh, stay vibrant, stay wide-eyed, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. I wanted to say, keep your ears small and your, uh, keep your mouth small and your ears um, <laughs> big. That's my, that's my favorite quote. <laughs> As in, keep learning from from everyone. Keep tuning into podcasts like this. Uh, they really provide a lot of value, uh, which which you pay thousands to get. Uh, keep reading books. Um, the best mentoring that you can get is from books, is from videos, it's from podcasts like this uh, that you can't get just uh, on off the streets or even at school. You can't get it at school. This is practical knowledge. So keep plugging yourself there and you will we'll be reading about you soon on the front pages for good reasons. Thank you so much, dear Nati. It has been really very great on my part listening to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.